actually, guys, I was um, in the same training as what you are having now six months ago. Um, I believe it was June, July. Um, and um, when I created or when I started my project, um, I already had something in mind, but I didn't really know if that was the right project. But thankfully, um, the training really helped. So um, my project um, is reduction of processing time for QA audits. So the reason why I actually selected this project for my certification is because this is something that um, is really a problem in my department. Um, so on a regular basis, um, my QAs um, or TQAs um, are actually having overtime. Um, we also had an attrition uh, due to workload. And um, it was a constant hire of additional QA every time operations um, adds more people. So since we are a support department, it's, it's really difficult to um, add more people because we are basically not earning and it's just operations who's earning. So when uh, we did um, the project uh, from the make up until, um, uh, from define up until um, control, um, there were definitely um, challenges when we uh, did the project. Um, but after going through um, the steps and going back to my notes and then asking Rex every now and then, um, we were really happy because we saw, we didn't know that this is, it's basically something really huge, uh, but um, it gave us a lot of confidence um, in um, processing more audits or um, exploring more in terms of career and development for the department. So um, our numbers initially, uh, we had 62.52 uh, hours um, over time on a monthly basis. Um, after the project, um, from 62.52 hours, it turned to zero. Um, processing time of the whole um, weekly audits from nine days, we basically start from Monday, and then report the data um, Tuesday. So that's nine days total. Um, after the project, it turned to just five days. So we start audit Monday and then report by end of week um, Friday. Um, average auditing time from one of our, um, from the one category, um, it's from 15, 15 minutes to seven minutes. And then um, for 2022, um, we were supposed to hire nine additional QAs, but we reduced it to three. So we were able to save huge like amount of money for this. Um, and we were able to save around 1.3 um, million for this. Some of the roadblocks that I, we actually encountered when we were doing this is that um, since it's not just us um, who, not just us, when, when I say not just us, we, we relied on other departments in completing this project. So um, when uh, we hit some of the roadblocks, um, one of the things that helped us is number one, uh, we negotiated with um, the other department. And second, when we were planning um, uh, in doing the timeline for this, we already added um, time buffer for each phase. So when we were in training, when I was in training, um, Rex gave us the heads up that um, analyze um, and improve uh, was the lengthiest part of the make. So during that time I already put in mind that I should put more time um, for this when, um, when I start my project. So that's what I did. So I think I put one and a half month for improve, for improve phase. How Six Sigma um, helped me. Number one, um, I asked questions during training um, and it really helped me understand um, all the concept itself and how it can be done, um, especially how it can be applied to my project. Um, also, um, I took note, I took note of the things that I know I might um, forget because I always forget. Um, and I always go back with the notes that um, uh, Six Sigma PH um, gave. 
Another thing is that um, when I was already completing my storyboard, um, Rex actually gave great recommendations um, for um, the project, how we can move forward, how we can improve it moving forward. Um, and then um, during training, um, it was actually um, crazy when we had our activity. Um, she actually um, really challenged me because when we were doing it, she said that most of the people who are actually who get certified are the ones who um, use their um, project during the activity. So in my mind, I was like, um, nope, I will not, I will not say that it's going to be this or that, but I will make sure that I will complete this um, project at the end of this uh, date that I set, which was December. So thank you so much, Chrissy um, and Rex uh, for that. Um, tips that I can share to you guys um, is that uh, always reach out for help uh, because uh, when you're doing projects, especially um, Six Sigma projects, you will never ever complete it on your own. So always ask for help, ask questions, clarifications. Um, another thing uh, that I learned um, from Rex is you have to start your project as soon as your training starts because you will forget um, what you've learned um, as time goes by. So um, when training starts, start your project too. Um, another thing uh, that also helped me is the method picker. Um, that's uh, one of the um, things that they've shared uh, for the training. And then focus on your deadlines. As much as possible, you should commit to it because yeah um, we have a lot of things to do other things aside from the project but um, you always have to remind yourself uh, to commit to the deadline and yeah that's what helped me <laughs> a lot of things that i didn't know <laughs> that was actually there um, which uh, vsm helped so number one a lot of reports a lot of duplicates on the reports so operations already had existing reports that we're also reporting to them. Um, and then um, two manual process. So they had to copy paste everything um, from Excel to Excel. Uh, they didn't need to do some of the things that they were copying and pasting. Um, and then they were doing things that were just really not necessary. So that's the biggest chunk of the time that was basically eating the um, process time. So when we did the value stream map, um, we removed the du duplicates uh, first and foremost. Um, we removed the things that were not necessary, that were not supposed to be there. Um, and then um, we also talked to operations, um, calibrated which should be part of our report, which should not be part. Um, so that let's say if operation should report this um, data to, to the client, then we should not be the one to save it or whatever. So just process alignment, uh, removal of duplicates and um, yeah, al alignment and removal of duplicates, not necessary stuff, removal. To um, so we already have an existing tool uh, that they're using. Um, so that is something that we just added to that existing tool. So um, number one, for example, instead of us manually sending, um, let's say, the scorecards to each um, team lead, um, we just gave them an access to just view the scorecard from the tool itself. So that's already removing one hour per TQA. So we just based it on the um, matrix, whatever is high, um, high and um, high and in, um, high priority and then in scope. Uh, we focused on those first. And then um, the things that are within uh, scope and then high priority, those are the ones that we listed on all of our action items. Um, so 
your question, how did we prioritize? Um, we prioritized all that are within scope and high priority and distributed it to the um, people who are part of the team. So all of those action items were actually starting at the same time um, when we complete when when we started um, improve phase. So there. <laughs> negotiated with the other <laughs> departments. Um, and it's also really important uh, to build relation, good relation, working relationships with um, other departments so that we, you can really um, talk to them immediately if there are some issues or some concerns. Um, and then um, I think another pro tip that I can uh, share is if you know that it's something critical, you partner with your sponsor so that um, if your sponsor, usually um, the other departments report to the sponsor, right? Um, I mean, for, for my project, uh, they do. So I partnered with them um, and I usually have um, a weekly, actually weekly conversation with the sponsor to give that person an update. Um, so in case I have some concerns, I, I share that to the sponsor and then the sponsor talks to the person. QA score, they were saying, they, they were somehow doubtful. They weren't feeling that there will be a change after the project uh, because they still had, during the project, they still had some um, overtime. Uh, they needed to yeah, no change during the pro uh, during when we were doing the project. But after after doing the project, they saw that they have their own time already. They were working eight hours a day, um, and sometimes they still have time. They can they can use the excess time working to their career development. Uh, so that's basically one of the things um, that they were really happy about, that they were not just working within the um, 40 hours uh, within the week, but it's some of those hours are actually already spent um, to, let's say their own certifications, uh, personal development. Um, and the morale of the team um, was really uplifted. Um, other departments or as a company, um, they were really happy because they never thought that the company was actually bleeding from a training and quality standpoint. They never thought that uh, we had huge problems that it should have been raised prior to the client because um, it's not something that, um, that they really know. Um, so, yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, just one more question. Um, how did you, because uh, you mentioned earlier that there were challenges when it comes to other teams. Uh, I think you highlighted timelines in particular. Uh, um, how did you try to address that besides adding a time buffer? I negotiated with the other <laughs> departments. <laughs> um, and it's also really important uh, to build relation, good relation, working relationships with um, other departments so that we, you can really um, talk to them immediately if there are some issues or some concerns. Um, and then um, I think another pro tip that I can uh, share is if you know that it's something critical, you partner with your sponsor so that um, if your sponsor, usually um, the other departments report to the sponsor, right? Um, I mean, for, for my project, uh, they do. So I partnered with them um, and I usually have um, a weekly, actually weekly conversation with the sponsor to give that person an update. Um, so in case I have some concerns, I, I share that to the sponsor and then the sponsor talks to the person. <laughs> and I also oh. talk to the person. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much and congrats. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Gian. Chris, questions? Yeah. Um, before my question, Sibel, congrats. Kasi talagang parang napaka-impactful nung um, from 9 FTE you have lowered it down to three. So baka may bonus ka sa company. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> is how, how did it impact 
the changes into the behavior of the people within the organization because it i would assume that there is mm -hmm. um there is a lot especially um within my department so before uh, when we were doing the project uh, yung mga qa score they were saying they, they were somehow doubtful they weren't feeling that there will be a change after the project uh, because they still had during the project they still had some um over time uh, they needed to yeah no change during the pro uh, during when we were doing the project but after after doing the project they saw that they have their own time already they were working eight hours a day um, and sometimes they still have time they can they can use the excess time working to their career development uh, so that's basically one of the things um, that they were really happy about that they were not just working within the um, 40 hours uh, within the week but it's some of those hours are actually already spent um, to let's say their own certifications uh, personal development um, and the morale of the team um, was really uplifted um, other departments or as a company um, they were really happy because they never thought that the company was actually bleeding from a training and quality standpoint they never thought that uh, we had huge problems that it should have been raised prior to the client because um, it's not something that um, that they really know. Um, so yeah.